4, last week we talked about how important it is to know the subject of our worship. We talk about what we worship, and we learn that we become what we worship as we conclude that service. And now is a continuation of the series that what you worship will determine how you will worship. Amen? That's why tonight, we welcome you, those who are joining us online, Make sure you pay attention, write down, and, and continue to, to study and listen diligently. The same with us here. Today is about how we worship. And we will answer this question according to the scripture found in John chapter 4, verse 23 to 24. As we know the story of the Samaritan woman, the Lord encountered him, talking about many things, and then the conversation leads to worship. But our text is about John chapter 4, verse 23 to 24. It says here, But the hour is coming, and now is, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship Him. God is spirit, and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and in truth. But in verse 23, can you go back, Sister Vanessa, to verse 23, please? I want you to pay attention to a few words that I want to highlight that is very important when we are studying this text. Number one, I highlighted there the word in spirit and in truth. And then also, I want you to see the hour is coming. It means there is a time. There is a time for this. And the Bible says that that time is what? Now. Amen? Can you say the word now? That is the time that we need to respond to God, how we should worship Him. How are we going to, to respond to the Word of God? It's not going to be tomorrow, next month, next year. But the Bible encourages us we need to be a true worshiper now. So you need to be willing to receive this, to learn, and to apply because I want you to see the word true. There is distinction between worshiper and those who are true worshipers. There will be many people in all churches, in all religions that they call themselves worshiper. But the Bible according to the text that we're studying, is not only talking about worshiper. We are talking about what? True worshipers. That's why in this church, we don't want to just be worshiper. We want to be true worshipers. And how do we know that we are true worshiper? You need to know how to worship in spirit and in truth. So, how do we worship God is the question that is going to be answered as our topic tonight. But the answer to that question, how do we worship God, is given in this text. And I have a slide, Sister Vanessa, just please follow me on that, on that slide as I speak on those questions. How we worship is now based on that question, how do we worship in spirit? And in truth. And the answer is what? The answer is according to our text, true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. That's why the question, follow up question that we have okay, I know now how to worship, and that is to worship God in spirit and in truth. That's the answer according to our text. Pero Pastor Romel, another question is, how do I worship in spirit and in truth? And how do I know now, because I've been a Christian for 10 years, for 12 years, for 7 years, for 3 years, how do I know that I am worshiping in spirit and in truth? Because I can tell you now, listen to me church, 
Everyone, even you who are watching, even though you are coming in this church Sunday after Sunday, but I can tell you, you may be out of your ignorance. You are not worshiping God in spirit and in truth. Amen? That's why you can be just a worshiper, but you are not yet a true worshiper. That's why we need to understand what does Jesus Christ meant when He said, look at the importance. The Father is seeking. Can you say the word seeking? Seeking. When you are using the word seek or seeking, it means that is something very important. You are looking for this. And the Father, I, I, when, when reading this text, I'm imagining, my goodness, every day, God the Father is seeking through worshipers. Why is that? Why is He seeking? Because in our time right now, it is so hard to find a true worshiper. That's why God is really seeking every day that's why, what does it mean to worship in spirit and in truth? And we will break it down first. We will answer the question, how do we worship in spirit? And then we will answer, how do we worship in truth? So, two views that we are going to answer the question, how do we worship in spirit? What does it mean to worship? In spirit, according to the Bible, not according to Pastor Romel. Amen? According to the Bible. Now, in answering this, there are two views I want you to understand. Because the word spirit there, many theologians, many scholars, even many um, uh, prominent pastors, evangelists in our time right now and even earlier, that this spirit pertains does it pertain to the Holy Spirit or does it pertain to my spirit? Remember, we are a spirit being. The Holy Spirit dwells in us. That's why I'm going to answer this in two views so that we will cover the whole of it. And you will not get wrong about this. Whether it is the Holy Spirit or the Spirit that is in you, they are both correct. And I will tell you later and I will show you how does it happen when Jesus tells us we must worship in spirit, He is referring, the first view is this, He is referring to us as a spirit being. When we call ourselves a spirit being, we are no longer talking about our old life. Why? Our old life is a dead spirit. Dead cannot worship, say Amen. Dead cannot worship. That's why if you cannot worship, you might still be dead. Do you hear me? Because why? The Bible says, everyone that has what? Breath. Praise the Lord. Say amen. So the only one that doesn't praise the Lord are the ones who are dead. So if you are alive, and I'm not talking about physically, I'm talking about alive in your spirit, you have the ability to worship. But God is not only talking about, again, worshiper. We are talking about true worshiper. That's why we need to learn what does it mean to worship in spirit. So worship in spirit means your heart is fully engaged when you are worshiping. The first view the way we answer this is the Spirit is about your heart, your will, your being. Why? Because you are no longer just physical body, right? You are no longer just body. We are what? A spirit being. The real us is no longer just about the flesh. This is just our outward what? Appearance. But the real you is what's inside that physical body. That's why the Bible says to us, even though the flesh or the body is perishing, but your inner man, your spirit is always what? Going from glory to glory to glory. Why? Because you are not just about the body. 
That's why we need to understand worshiping God in spirit is more than the gesture, more than the lifting up your hands, more than the bowing down, the kneeling of you, kneeling down to God. All of these are important and good and necessary for me when I worship God. But that doesn't determine whether I'm worshiping God in spirit. Because unless, listen to this now, unless there is a real passion for God, there is no worship in spirit. Do you hear me? If there is no real passion for God, and when I say passion, it's going beyond your what? Your emotions. Emotions are important, but the worship must be genuine. Worshiping in spirit, what is this making clear to us? Worshiping in spirit takes away, it removes all the rituals, all the legalities, all the things that we do as, as again and again, rep, rep, repetitive action. It goes beyond all the legalism of the way we worship. Just like the way we pray. When we are still dead in our spirit, how do we pray? We pray according to what we memorize. We have something that we read and we follow and pray again and again and we think that's the way we pray. But when we became alive in our spirit, how do we pray? From our heart. And we speak to God. Out of the abundance of our heart, we speak to the Lord. And I will give you a biblical example of this. First, in the Old Testament. Just like in the city of Jerusalem, in Isaiah 29.13, Look at what the Lord said to the prophet about this city in Jerusalem. Therefore the Lord said, Inasmuch as these people draw near with their mouths and honor me with their lips, but have removed their hearts far from me and their fear toward me is taught. How? By the commandment of men. God is simply saying, Itong mga tao na to, these people, they seem religious and they're confessing words that are what? Commanded by them. Maybe they're leaders by men, but they are not from the heart. And then the Lord even used the same text when He quoted this against the scribes and the Pharisees in the New Testament. Look at what it says in Matthew 15, verse 7 to 8. And God used the word hypocrites. Well, did Isaiah prophesy about saying, These people draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their hearts is far from me. What is the first word that, God, that the Bible used? Hypocrites. So it simply means, when we are worshiping in the Spirit, that is us, our whole being, especially our heart, are engaged in worship. Kaya pala when we worship in this church or in your Bible study or in your personal devotion, even though your mouth are opening, but if all those are just because you are reading the lyrics, but it's not from your heart, you know what the Lord calls us? What? Hypocrites. Why? Because we are just going with the flow or because maybe my parents are watching or maybe because our leader is watching or because the worship leader can see me. I have to do what everything is doing. And when we are like that, that we open our mouth, we sing a song and just for us to be going in the flow or the routine of our religion, God is saying to us, Hypocrite. You are not true worshiper. You are just doing it for the sake of you doing it. Are you following me, church? That's why God is really seeking a true worshiper who can worship Him in spirit and in truth. And the scribes and the Pharisees in the time of Jesus, are just like many of us today. That's why we need to understand this message. Because why? The Pharisees and the scribes are more concerned about 
obeying the rituals, following the norm, and yet their heart is too far away from God. Worship, church, cannot be rituals or religious ceremony. God does not want fake worshipers. He wants worshipers who are sincere, who love Him, who follow Him, and obey Him. Now, the follow-up question is this, Pastor, is there such a thing as expert worshiper? Just like what our exhorter said, is there such a thing as expert evangelist? No. Because God is only looking in one and one thing alone, and that is your heart. So to worship God in spirit means our worship is from within, from the heart. At kaya yung, yung lyrics, the lyrics that we are confessing, even though we don't know the lyrics originally, but because it's flash, but the reason why you're following, because out of the abundance of your heart, you're following the lyrics, because you know that all the li- lyrics are perfect for our God. That's why I look at the example of Dr. Batarsi, remember? He knows when to correct us when the lyrics is not right. Do you hear me? And we've been singing that song again and again, and then when, when he heard it, don't sing that. Because he knows who his God is. Church, worshiping in spirit must be sincere. And what motivates us to worship God in the Spirit? Our love for God. If we love God, no one and nothing can stop us from worshiping God in the Spirit. We are driven by our gratitude towards Him for three reasons. We are driven for gratitude to worship Him for three reasons. Number one, for who He is for what He has done to us. And number three, for who we are. Pag naunawaan natin, if we learn who God is, if we learn what He has done to us and for us, and He will continue to do for us now and in the future, and we understand who I am, that God is so mindful of me, Sister Hannah, the only thing we can do is just worship God in the Spirit and nothing else. Nothing else. But the truth is, and I'm not saying this just to you, even to me. Why is it when it comes to worship, we can be easily distracted? Right? We need to engage God in worship with our whole being. Because God is seeking through worshipers who will worship Him with their whole hearts. That's why I have here a reflection question to you. When you come on a Sunday fellowship like this, do you worship God and sing to Him with your whole heart, fully engaged, or are we easily distracted by so many things? That's the question for us to reflect. But I want you to remember something. Our spirit, as what we are discussing, is the central part of our being. It is the core. Can you say core? Our spirit, remember that spirit is from God because when God formed us, remember, He breathed on us. And that spirit comes from the Lord. That's why that spirit, listen now carefully, can communicate to God. That spirit became dead when we, not, not sorry, not dead, that spirit became overwhelmed by the flesh, because of sin. That's why we need to be born again. Because of sin, that spirit is quenched in us. That's why God says, you need to be born again in the spirit. And that spirit now is what going, is what going to be the source of true worship from within. It is the center of our will. It is the center of our emotions. That's why later on we will learn about the balance when it comes to worshiping God in spirit and in truth. Because we are not just crying for the sake of 
emotions because everyone is crying. You are not like that anymore. And then after ng worship, wala na. It's not like that anymore. To worship in spirit is to do something that is beyond just the physical actions and gestures. It involves your emotions. But that emotions is based on the truth. That's why we need to worship God in spirit and in truth. We do not worship by simply bowing our knees, raising our hands, crying. All of these are possible when you worship. But you worship in completion, with balance, in spirit, and in truth. What about the second view about this spirit? What is the second view? But the word spirit may also be ref a reference to the Holy Spirit. This is acceptable subject that we can learn as Jesus, when he talks to the Samaritan woman, can mean twofold. And I want you to remember this carefully. A true worshiper must worship not only with a genuine spirit, but you need to understand that that genuine spirit is enabled by the Holy Spirit. Did you, say, did you get that? We need to understand as we learn that this means true worshipers must have what? The indwelling of the Holy Spirit. And I will give it to you as a testimony. Now look at me here so you will get it. Before you became Christian, before the indwelling of the Holy Spirit in you, do you know how to worship God? Answer me. No. I don't even know before I became born again, I don't even know that we can worship using drums. I don't even know that you can worship using a guitar. I don't even know that, that worship can sound lively. I don't know that. Why? Because the way I know worship is all about solemn and quietness. Because the way I worship, I only worship, I thought I knew, is based on the rituals. It's based on religion. But when you learn how to worship and your spirit are being activated by the Holy Spirit, you know what you will do? Just like what Philippians chapter 3, verse 3 said. Apostle Paul said to them, the distinction, we are the circumcised. Ang sabi ni Apostle Paul, and because we are People of God, he is simply saying, look at what he said. Who worship God in the? Did you see that? Who worship God in the Spirit? Rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. This text is so perfect. When we worship, we no longer concentrate about the bodies. But the body is just following what the Spirit leads us. Say Amen. That's why every single one of us who are a living Spirit, moving according to the Spirit of God, being convicted, none of us will be dead when it comes to worship. Because it says there, the distinction, sino yung circumcised? The Jew. Now, we are not the Jew, but our heart, has been circumcised in Christ Jesus. And because we are circumcised in the heart, the Spirit of God dwells in us. That's why if you truly are born again, recipient of the indwelling Holy Spirit in you, the way you worship is no longer the same. We worship God according to the Spirit. 1 Corinthians 3.16 Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? Say Amen. Say Amen. Raise your hand if you believe that you belong to Jesus. Raise your hand if you believe. Now, every one of you who believe that Jesus is your Lord and Savior, it means 
the Holy Spirit dwells in you. And that is now the truth that I need to believe. If the Holy Spirit dwells in me, it means the Holy Spirit is connecting to my spirit and teaching me how to worship God in spirit and in truth. That's why I am a true worshiper. And that is the same with you. That's why you no longer, later on the example, you're no longer concerned about the person beside you, in front of you, behind you, who is watching you. You don't care about your clothes anymore. You are concerned to please God because the Holy Spirit is convicting you. And if you are not obeying that, church, young people, adults, even me, if I'm so afraid to worship, if I'm so awkward to worship, if I'm so concerned about others, how they worship, and even me, how they will perceive me, I am just restricting the Holy Spirit in me. And I'm questioning. That's why, tignan nyo tayo, remember when you, we used to have a combined praise and worship or Sunday service or fellowship with the church of Pastor Friday, remember that? What do we see, these African brother and sister? We are amazed how they worship. Therefore, church, worshiping in spirit means as an individual, you need to be what? Born again believer and worship God genuinely from your heart. And write this down, please. I didn't put it in the slide, so write this down. Someone said so powerfully, through worship is the fruit of the working of the Holy Spirit. Say amen. Through worship is the fruit of the working of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is convicting you, working in your heart, working in the Spirit that God gave in you, and then the fruit. You are now learning how to worship. That's why I'm telling you now, you go to the place where you used to worship, you will no longer be comfortable worshiping that way because you have learned the worship that God is looking for. Amen? So, what is the prerequisite in order for us to worship? In spirit, just like the Lord Jesus said, John 3, 3, unless man be born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. You cannot see the kingdom of God. That is what I used to be. I don't know how to worship because I am not yet born again. That's why being born again is not a religion for the first time of you who haven't heard it. It is a transformation of your spirit. Why? It is the Holy Spirit who opens our eyes when it comes to understanding the power of God, the glory of God. We don't know all of this before. Who opens our eyes on that? When the Word of God come upon us, the Holy Spirit opens our eyes. It is the Holy Spirit who what? He steers our hearts and He gave us what? Ability to proclaim the goodness and thank God. It is the Holy Spirit who opened our eyes to see Jesus Christ as our Redeemer and Savior. That's why now I'm convinced the reason why people cannot worship God in spirit and in truth it is because they haven't surrendered their life to Jesus Christ yet. They haven't. What about the other part? What does it mean to worship in truth? We answer what does it mean to worship in spirit. What about what does it mean to worship in truth? So on top of worshiping God in the spirit, you as a worshiper, I as a worshiper, must also make sure I am worshiping God not only in the Spirit, but in truth. You cannot separate them. Amen? Our worship simply means the worship must be done. When you hear the word worship God in truth, it simply means the way we worship is entirely based and in agreement with the Word of God. 
Amen? What is the source of your truth? I need to ask this question to you. Maybe you have different way of worshiping. Maybe it's your first time to be here. Maybe you've been here, but you think, no, that's not for me. That's not how I want to worship. My question is this. What is the basis of your truth? Because as a believer, there's only one source of our truth, and that is the Word of God. And if the basis of your truth is not the Word of God, then it means you will fail because that is a false truth. Our worship must agree to the revelation of the Scripture of who God is, of who you are, what we believe about God is important, our attitude in worship will always be determined about how we perceive God according to the Scripture. Kaya nga, tignan niyo mga kapatid. When we are not yet set free in the bondage of religion, we thought we are worshiping God, but we never even consult the Bible how to worship God. Do you hear me? Worship that is acceptable to God is done according to the truth of the Word of God. So, we cannot base our worship in wrong teaching, in wrong doctrine. That's why, as an application in this church, what are we doing? We are encouraging you, we are pushing you, we are telling you, please meditate your Bible, read the Scripture, keep on listening and listening the Word of God. Why? Because the only way for you to understand how to worship God is if you know the Word of God. Tell me, are you going to worship something that you do not know, just like the Samaritan woman? Kaya nga in-encounter ng Panginoong Isokristo itong babae na to. That's why the Lord encountered this woman. Because why? The Lord Jesus also wants the Samaritan to learn how to worship God in spirit and in truth. Why? Because the Samaritans, they think that the, the way they need to worship is on that mountain. But God says, there will be a time that neither in Jerusalem nor in that mountain you will worship. Because, because when you worship God, you are no longer limited to a certain place. That's why to us, look at me here, are you listening? When we talk about worship, we are not only talking about Sunday service. Wherever you are, you can worship God. Even without opening your mouth, you can worship God. Because even the way we live is an act of worshiping God. This includes many things when it comes to the truth. This includes the truth about God, who He is, what He has done, what is He doing to you. Our worship must be in truth. What do you mean, Pastor? Our worship must be in, in truth. You must be properly knowledgeable and informed. The way the church is moving in your life, is providing you maybe in my preaching one hour to study the Word of God, to learn the Word of God. And in doing so by faith, I trust the Lord that you and me will continue to grow as we hear and hear and hear the faith is going to grow. Amen? And our faith is growing. It means, look at me here. This is the good news. Are you ready? If you are sitting here, in your Bible study, in your devotion time, faithfully, diligently, with a genuine heart, what is happening? The way you understand and know how, what, and why to worship God is growing because your faith is growing and growing. That's why the way you worship five years ago is no longer the same as you worship now. Maybe before you don't even open your mouth. You're so shy. You're so, you're so concerned about others. You're easily distracted. But because of the truth that is entering in your spirit, in your mind, in your body, what's happening? The way you worship is changing. And I'm not only talking about Sunday. Church, John 8.32 is so true. Because of the truth of the Word of God, we have been set free from the wrong way of worshiping God. Say amen. We are not there yet, 
but we are no longer what we used to be. Before, when I was still in the Philippines, the way I worship, I go to church because I have new pants. And I'm giving thanks to the Lord. And I'm always at the back hunting beautiful young woman. It's true. And you know, para ako nanonood ng sine, it's like watching movie. If I attend the service in the middle, I will finish on the next session in the middle. That's true. Because I don't know the Word of God. But when the truth comes in, and you have that truth, you shall know the truth. Yun ang importante, mga kapatid. The truth is here, available to you, but if you will not be willing to know the truth, that truth doesn't do anything to you. That's why we need to know the truth. And once you know the truth, you apply the truth. And you know, the good news is so liberating. The truth shall set you free. Hallelujah. We worship God according to the truth of His words. We believe what the Word says about my God because the Word of God is God and He cannot lie. And because of this, we are no longer what? Fake worshippers. We are no longer pretenders. Diba sometimes, you know, when, when you are worshipping, naglilip sync ka pa, no? You're listen, lip, even though the worship leader said, open your mouth and raise your voice to the Lord. And here you are, you're worshiping, lip sync. And then you will realize you study the Word of God. No, my God deserves more than that. You will shout to the Lord. And you will say, Hallelujah, Jesus. And you cannot stop yourself but to worship God. Worshiping God in spirit and in truth will lead you to a balanced worship. True worship should engage not only your emotions, which is your spirit. True worship should also engage your mind, which is the truth. Because your mind holds the faculty of truth that God gave you. Both of these are necessary in order to, to worship God. Because the spirit without truth leads to what? Just all emotion, shallow, over emotion, and no basis of truth. Pero kapag sobra ka namang about truth, doctrine, teaching about that, nagiging legalistic ka na. So there needs to be a balance. That's why if we know how to worship God in spirit and in truth, there will be balance. It's not just about our emotions when we worship. It's not just about our mind. We don't want to overthink our worship. But what? We have balance because I know how to worship God according to the truth of His Word. The Word of God tells me who my God is. The Word of God tells me what He deserves. That's why, church, remember this. I put it in the slide. The more we know about God, the more we appreciate Him. Amen? The more we know about God, the more we appreciate Him. And the more we appreciate Him, the deeper we worship Him. Amen? And the deeper we worship Him, the more God is glorified through our worship. Amen? I found that. That's not from me. I found it from a man of God that is so true in his confession. Look at the, the stages. If we know about God, of course you will appreciate because you have understood what God has done to you. And because of your appreciation to God, you have this deep sense of understanding how loving our God is and then the more you will worship Him. And because of that, God is so glorified because He is receiving a true worship. Now, only those who believe in Jesus Christ can understand what this means. Say amen. Take this as a grace and loving 
words from the Lord because unbeliever can never understand this. That's why, take note of this, only those who believe in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior can appreciate what this means. In 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5, there can be no true worship without salvation because we need our mediator. We must come to God through one true mediator, and that is Jesus Christ. For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man, Christ Jesus. Amen? Even in Ephesians 2.13, but now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off, that's what we are. That's why we don't know how to worship. We are so far away from God. Have been brought near by the blood of, the, of Christ. That's why I can confirm only the redeemed saved by the blood of Jesus can worship God in spirit and in truth. Only the Holy Spirit can enable you and me to worship God in spirit and in truth. The gospel, once we understand, will produce in us so much appreciation that we cannot help it but to worship God. Now, can we go to the second part of that verse 23? Look at the second part of verse 23. There is a word here that I want you to see. The word seeking. For the Father is seeking such to worship Him. Pastor, why is it important for me to learn how to worship God in spirit and in truth? Because look at verse 23, the second part. The Father is seeking. Can you say the word seeking? He is seeking such a worshiper. Even today, I believe, even right now, I believe with all my heart, God is always seeking a true worshiper. And then I remember in Old Testament, King James Version, remember what it says? God inhabits the praises of His people. God inhabits the praises of His people. In other translation, God inhabits the praises of the Israelites. What does this mean? Our praise and worship matters to God. It matters to God. Even today, God is seeking worshiper who will worship Him in spirit and in truth. That's why I want you to consider this. Consider this. It's amazing, church. I want you to appreciate this. It's amazing. Young people, elders, dads, moms, it's amazing that every day God is seeking for us to worship Him in spirit and in truth. Imagine that, church. Ang Diyos nagsisik na i-worship natin siya the way we live in spirit and in truth. Imagine that. That's why we need to be reminded of the way we live every day. Because every day, church, God is seeking those who will worship Him in spirit and in truth. And I want to give this to you as an example para makita natin, Pastor, ano ba yung itsura ng worshiping God in spirit and in truth? I want you to see the life of King David. In 2 Samuel chapter 6, verse 14 to 22, but I'm not going to read the whole verses. I will tell you the story. In verse 14 of chapter 6, Then David danced before the Lord with all his might, and David was wearing a linen ephod. Now, ephod, remember, it is a garment that a high priest or a king or someone prominent that has 
so many layers and so many details that they need to wear for a special occasion. Now here comes King David. He's so happy because God chose him. And he worshiped God and, and he is glorifying God and he is dancing. And there here comes Michael, the daughter of Saul. And he became and she became so indignant to King David because you're a king and you're dancing like that, that your garment are taken off and, and even the ephod are, are no longer there. He is just wearing his undergarments. Why? Because King David is worshiping God. But I want to show you verse 22. Look at the response of King David when he said, and I will be even more undignified. Can you say undignified? I will be even more undignified than this. And will be humble in my own sight, but as for the maid servants of whom you have spoken, by them I will be held in honor. What does this mean to us? King David loved the Lord with all his heart. He knows, he's a smart man, who God is, what God has done to him, and God chosen him. And he doesn't care what people will say about him when he is worshiping God. And ang sabi pa niya, I am, I am even willing to be what? More undignified. King David, church, is not concerned about what others will say. He knows the truth so much about his God, his, his king. That's why King David, number one, was not ashamed. King David was not embarrassed. King David is not concerned about the people around him. King David is not even concerned about his position when it comes to worshiping God. The only thing he's concerned about is this. He wants to give what his God deserves. Why? I don't want you to miss this. The worship of King David is so sincere and so genuine. Worshiping God in spirit and in truth requires genuineness, requires honesty. True worship doesn't care who is watching you. True worship is not worry about what people will think and say about you. True worship is directed to God. And it doesn't concern anybody else. And what happened? Because of the way King David prays and worshiped the Lord. You know what happened, church? King David touched the heart of God. That's what we desire. Every time we worship, individually or collectively, God, we want to touch your heart. And you know when God is pleased with us, you know what He will do? His presence is so tangible. True worship touches the heart of God. It invites the presence of God it invites His power, His healing, His anointing. And that is true, the Holy Spirit. That's why I want to conclude, church, by challenging you, by encouraging you as I encourage myself. When you worship God, wherever it may be, whether it is Sunday service in your school, Isabella, in your workplace, Brother Isaiah. In your house, Sister Luz. In my office, when I'm meditating. When I'm out and about, wherever I am. When we worship God, listen to this carefully. God is looking at our heart. Take note of this. When you worship, remember that God is looking at your heart. That is the only thing that God is looking 
from us. Whether you want to lift your hands, whether you want to shout a voice of praise in public or in private worship, it is completely up to you. But the only thing that matters, what is your heart of worship? What is the condition of your heart? Worshiping in spirit and in truth is the goal of all believers, including you and me. When we worship God in spirit and in truth, it brings glory to the name of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's why next time when we have and you have opportunity to worship God, first remember you have a spirit and the Holy Spirit is in you. And you know how to worship Him, not only in your spirit, but also in truth according to the knowledge of who God is. And this doesn't mean you copy me, you copy the worship leader, you copy the church. No, if you want that, so be it. But it depends what is the attitude of your hearts. When our worship leader's voice goes haywire, you don't stop. When the, the organ or the drums disconnect, we don't stop because all of those are just additionals. The way we worship is not because of them, not because of that. Thank God for all of that. But the way we worship is from the heart. And out of the abundance of our heart, our mouth sings genuine worship in spirit and in truth. Amen? Hallelujah. So now church, how we worship God. One answer. We worship in spirit and in truth. Why? Don't forget the why. Because the Father every day is seeking those who worship Him in spirit and in truth. Amen. Did you learn something tonight? Come on, let us all stand up.